I'm Barb and this is Knitted Squares, an intentional interwoven online community of love with Jesus and influencing the world for him. On this channel, I share insights from God's word along with practical tips, strategies for optimizing your walk with him. Let me say a big heartfelt welcome to you if you're new and welcome back if you've been here before. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button below and also the bell for the notifications so you don't miss an episode. And while you're there clicking buttons, hit the share to spread the joy of this community far and wide. And speaking of joy, in light of all that's gone on this week in the news, that may be the last thing you expected me to talk about. But my joy tank is overflowing and I hope it spills over on you today, too. Just seven weeks from today, it will be Christmas Day. I look forward to Christmas time every year because of the festivity and joy that fills the air as we anticipate the birthday of our King. And here at the end of 2020, I'm looking forward to it even more because of the long, hard, and that's an understatement, year that it's been. When 2020 began, I set out to intentionally maintain the joy that overflows at Christmas throughout the whole year. I decided that every 25th of the month, I would celebrate Christmas Day with a miniature tree and lights and playing Christmas music. So January 25th was the first month of Christmas. February 25th was the second month, and so on. Now, while I didn't manage to get this done every month with all the crazy that ensued, I did it a few times and really enjoyed the joy infusion that came from focusing on Jesus' birth and all that he brings every single day to my life and to our world. Now, this week, my devotional reading, Before the Election Chaos, brought me to a favorite chapter, Psalm chapter 1. The New Living Translation says, Oh, the joys of those who delight in God's law, meditating on it day and night. In other words, there is great joy for those who regularly read God's word, think about it over and over, and apply its truths to our lives. Oh, the joys of those who surrender to Jesus, receive cleansing from all sin, have a right standing with God, and live each day in the light of his love. This is the source of joy, and it has nothing to do with anything the world says or does. And joy has nothing to do with what is happening. That would be happiness. And while we all enjoy happy, sunshiny, carefree days, reality is those days come and go. Happiness ebbs and flows, kind of like water in response to winds and currents, but not joy. Joy is a constant a wonderful fruit produced by the living almighty spirit of God inside every child of God. So what happens when life smacks us in the face? What happens when on a personal level we go through heart-wrenching, gut-churning, difficult days and seasons? What happens to our joy when our nation is in crisis, divided right down the middle ideologically and politically? I have to confess, I felt a bit sucker punched this week with election results still not clear and the path forward uncertain at best. If joy was a publicly traded commodity, it would have been in the tank. But guess what? Joy is not on the market. Its source is not of this world. Joy has a name and it's Jesus. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I was able to rise above the chaos and move forward in the power of his spirit. Why? Because back to Psalm 1, I am like a tree planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season, even difficult ones. My leaves never wither, and I prosper in all that I do. What a wonderful picture this is of believers firmly rooted and grounded in Christ. Trees with deep, mature root systems are resilient. The main root of a tree, known as the tap root, drives down through the earth until it finds water. And from that underwater spring, it nourishes every branch and leaf. Surface issues of wind, rain, heat, cold, even drought, don't affect it because of the deep root system. 
it has water on top. So it flourishes in every season, even if others around it are languishing. Psalm 1 says, oh, the joys, because the psalmist knows the secret of joy on tap. My friends, because of Christ living on the inside, we can tap into joy every moment of every day. And I'm not talking about the sunshine in every day, Pollyanna types, who outwardly display excessive cheerfulness and optimism, but who have no substance on the inside to sustain them through adversity. I am talking about the joy and deep abiding peace that is the result of being completely restored in Christ to be who he designed us to be. We were created on purpose for a purpose. We were created to weather every single storm that life brings our way, even this current storm. And no matter which side of the political aisle you are on, it's a storm. This storm is no match for the strength of God in us, his joy within. So my question for you today is, are you a tree whose roots grow down deep and nourish you as a strong, healthy, resilient tree? Are you joy-filled and finding his joy, presence, and peace sustaining you? Or are you more like a tree we found here on the campgrounds where we're staying? By all appearances a few weeks ago, this tree looked like it was firmly anchored in rich Iowa soil and had a sufficient root system support to support its outward majestic presence here in the Des Moines River Valley. It seemed to be a solid sturdy tree until adversity came, that is. A strong windstorm came through and it came crashing down. And look what it is on the inside. Something unseen yet catastrophic happened on the inside of this tree and it is now destroyed. And after providing wood for a few campfires, it's reduced to ashes. God forbid that this is a picture of anyone watching or listening to this message. How would you know if it is? Let's go back to Psalm 1. Those who are reduced to ashes or chaff, that is, the wind blows away, have the following behavioral patterns. Number one, following the advice of wicked people, making decisions large and small based on pulp culture, societal norms, or from the direct or indirect input of non-Christian people. Number two, standing around with sinners, hanging out at worldly hangouts, going with the flow, purposeless living, or number three, sitting in the seat of mockers, chiding those who are doing their level best to live for Christ, making fun of people who seem to take this God thing too far, minimizing the place of faith and values in personal life and society. If this is your MO, your modus operandi, your regular way of viewing and relating to the world, your joy will be unspeakable because you will truly have no joy to speak of. If you've been wavering and in danger of crumbling, commit your life to Christ if you never have and receive forgiveness of all your sins. When you do that, you will sense his joy beginning to bubble up within. If you have drifted from Christ and have been compromised, renew your commitment to Christ today and surrender all to his lordship. Once you are again rightly related to our King and Creator, you have an all-access pass to joy on tap, the joy of the Lord that is your strength. And no matter what happens in the days, weeks, and the year ahead, remember the assurance of abiding joy from the scriptures. Psalm 2.12 says, What joy for all who take refuge in Him. Psalm 5 verse 11, Let all who take refuge in you, God, rejoice. Sing joyful praises forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and I thank you that you are the source of all joy. I thank you that you have fortified my life, the lives of those watching, many watching. You have fortified us with joy that nothing and no one can take away. No one can steal our joy because it's not of this world. It's from you. It's from the Spirit of God within us, and there is no end to it. God, I pray as we walk through difficult days and chaos, whether it's in a personal, um, family-related matter or on a national scale or on a global scale with all that's going on, God, I pray for deep joy to bubble up and out and spill over onto those around us. 
God, I pray that you will fill us to overflowing. Let us tap in. Let us not be discouraged because discouragement is not from the Spirit of God. Let us not give in to fear because fear is not from the Spirit of God. Let our roots grow down deep and draw up the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, that's accompanied by peace that passes understanding. Father, I ask right now by your Spirit that if there are those watching who are not in right relationship with you, either they've never accepted Christ as Savior or they have wandered from what they know to be the right path, walking with the Lord, God, I pray by your Spirit right now, you would draw them to yourself. They would repent of their sins. Say, Jesus, please forgive me. Come into my heart. Make me yours. Make me new. Fill me with your Spirit and help me live this life for you. Fill them with your joy, Lord. I pray for everyone watching right now, God. A fresh infilling of the joy of the Lord. We need your strength. We cannot live without your strength. Fill us now fresh and new with what comes only from your spirit. Through the power of your word living within us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You know what? I am filled with joy that you have joined me here again today. I pray that you have sensed his presence as we've been together and that you feel his joy welling up within you. His joy is truly our strength and it's more than enough to sustain all of us. Let's be intentional this week to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly and let's sing joyful praises forever because he is worthy. Reach out to those in your community of faith and pray together and encourage each other in the Lord. As always, I am here. I would love to pray with you and support you in any way that I can. Finally, let's be so authentically joy-filled that we influence others to tap into Jesus as well. May others look at us as we walk through all that is going on and say, hey, I want some of that joy too. I'll have what she's having. You know, it's not just for Christmas anymore. I'll see you next week.